Welcome to our Confidentiality, Integrity, and Availability module. CIA stands for Confidentiality, Integrity, and Availability. And these are our fundamental security principles that we base all of our security functions around. Depending on the system, it may be very important to maintain confidentiality only, or perhaps only availability, but most systems you will want to maintain all three. Confidentiality is the protection of our data from unauthorized individuals. This data can range from military secrets to trade secrets or personally identifiable information about our customers. It is important that this data remains secure and that unauthorized individuals are not able to access it. Integrity is the concept of making sure that the data is not modified without authorization. We need to protect our data to make sure that only authorized individuals can modify it. Imagine if someone was able to access pricing data for an online retailer and reduce the prices below the cost of the items. This would negatively impact the retailer, so we need to make sure that only authorized individuals are able to modify our data. The concept of availability relates to preventing systems from going offline or otherwise becoming unavailable for authorized users to be able to access them when necessary. It is important to make sure that our services are available when our users, whether that's our customers or employees, try to access them. Availability is very important to maintain in many different industries, from healthcare to making sure that patient systems are up and running when needed, to online retailers to make sure that they're not losing money when customers are trying to buy items and their website is not available. With confidentiality, we worry about controlling access to our data. We need to be concerned with two different types of data that needs to be protected. We need to make sure that our data in motion is protected. Data in motion refers to data that we're sending from one place to another, whether this is an email message or perhaps we're uploading important files to a cloud storage provider. We need to make sure that there is encryption in place so that unauthorized individuals are not able to intercept the data that we are transmitting. We also need to be concerned about protecting our data at rest. Data at rest refers to data that is being stored on a storage device, whether on a hard drive in a laptop computer or perhaps on a USB flash drive. We need to make sure that we are protecting that data in case someone locates or steals one of these devices, they are not able to view the data that they're not supposed to be able to access. It's important to make sure that we're properly labeling and storing sensitive data. The labels will vary depending on your industry. An example would be in the military where data is either labeled as top secret, secret, or unclassified. We need to make sure that we're storing our data appropriately. We have to provide a large amount of security for top secret data, and we don't need to provide as much security for unclassified data. But if our data is not labeled properly, then we will not be able to put the security controls in place that are appropriate to protect that data. When we talk about integrity, again, we need to make sure that we are not allowing any unauthorized individuals to modify our data. And we need to do this through all stages of the processing of our data. So we need to make sure that when we are processing our data, when we're sending our data, and when we're storing it wherever we're keeping it, whether it's on a server or in a cloud-based provider, we need to make sure that there's no unauthorized changes to this data. We can use things like encryption to protect the data. We can also use hashing algorithms. We can put audit controls in place to see if unauthorized individuals are accessing these resources. And we can also sign important email messages and documents with digital signatures to detect if there's any unauthorized modification. And also we wanna make sure we ensure our reliability and availability. We have to make sure that our systems are available when we need them and when our users attempt to access them. So we need to make sure that these systems are up and running at all times, but we also have to put controls in place to respond to incidents that may affect the availability of our systems. So we need to think about incident response and having a team in place to respond to get our systems back online as soon as possible. We need to make sure that we're looking at redundancy to make sure that we have systems in place that are resilient and can survive a hardware failure, a power failure. Also make sure that we have redundant internet connections to make sure that we don't have any interruptions in our availability. We can also think about virtualization, which makes these things easier, it makes it easier for us to provide redundant connections and redundant hardware. 
Also, we can think about cloud computing using a service provider to provide us with the ability to keep our resources up and running at all times. It's important to make sure that we have incident response plans in place because most likely an incident will occur and it's better to be prepared for it rather than trying to respond to it when it happens without a plan in place. So it's important to have incident response plans and teams in place to respond to these incidents. And we also have to think about disaster recovery. So if we have a fire or other disaster at our site, how are we going to recover our operations to a different site as quickly as possible without affecting our employees and our customers. There are many different threats to our confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and we need to put plans and countermeasures in place to protect from these threats. Some examples of confidentiality threats would be shoulder surfing, where someone comes up behind the user and watches what's on their screen, perhaps takes pictures of the items on their screen, or even watches them when they type in their password. You can also have man-in-the-middle attacks where an individual intercepts a message, they place themselves between the sender and the receiver, and then they're able to read the contents of that message. So we need to put controls in place to avoid that. We also need to avoid the physical theft of our devices. We want to make sure that no one can enter our building and steal laptop computers or USB flash drives or even servers. Um, and if they do steal those devices, we need to make sure that they are encrypted so that the data is not accessible to those individuals even if they do steal the data. For our integrity, preventing unauthorized modification, we could have an individual who attempts to disable our alerting mechanism in our intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems, and then they're able to access our data and modify the data without our administrators being alerted. We could also have individuals modifying messages while they're being transmitted. For an example, a individual in a company sends an email to another individual requesting that they send a payment. The attacker could modify that message and change the dollar amount and change the recipient. And now the individual who receives the email is sending funds to the wrong person. An attacker could also change your accounting records or system logs in order to hide the fact that they were in your system. So we need to have procedures in place to make sure that the logs are not tampered with. They could also modify your configuration files to make your systems behave in an inappropriate manner, which increases your risk of losing data or having it modified. When we talk about availability, we want to make sure that our authorized users are able to access the system when necessary. So here we need to prevent from man-made or natural disasters, natural disasters like tornadoes or hurricanes, or man-made disasters like an unauthorized individual entering your data center and destroying equipment. We also have to worry about components failing and making sure that we have things in place to prevent that, such as redundant hardware. So a server with two power supplies, and when one power supply fails, the other power supply is still able to power the server until a technician is able to replace that component. We also have terrorist attacks as a possibility of affecting our availability. We need to put controls into place for that. A hot site can be very helpful here that would allow you to switch your operations to a site in another city or another portion of the country, or perhaps in another country. And that way, if there's an attack in your area, operations can continue in that other area. Denial of service attacks, or DOS, and distributed denial of service attacks, or DDOS, are also becoming much more common. In a denial of service attack, an attacker attempts to place a system offline or otherwise prevent authorized individuals from accessing the system. In a distributed denial of service attack, the attacker uses a collection of computers, often hundreds or thousands, to attack a single target in order to place the system out of service. The DAD triad is an easy way to remember the threats to our CIA triad. You will most likely see questions on the exam relating to these types of threats, and the DAD triad is an easy way to remember these. Disclosure is a breach in our confidentiality. If we disclose data to an unauthorized individual, then we have not made sure that confidentiality of our data occurred. Alteration is the unauthorized modification of our data, and when an attacker modifies our data without permission, we have lost the integrity of that data. And finally, denial. If an attacker is able to deny access to our system, 
then they have breached our availability. So this is an easy way for you to remember the types of threats that would attack our CIA. This concludes our confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Thank you.